Hi everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. So today we have a very special speaker with us. He's none other than Rob Curry, a dear friend, a veteran in application security or cyber security. Yeah, it's great to be here, Vandana. Thanks so much for having me. It's super good to see you. It's always a pleasure to talk to you too. Um, such an honor. I, I know that you've been doing some work all over the world in, in talking to folks and raising up interest in this space. So um, anytime we get the chance to, to talk about it, it's great. So a lot happening in the space too. So, Yeah, totally. So I wanted to understand from your experience, how the era has changed or shifted from application security to people talking about DevOps, DevSecOps. Yeah. And a lot of content is there on the internet. A lot of free trainings are there. Conferences are almost free now. So how exactly people can um, gear up with the content that is there on the internet and how they can recognize, okay, this is the content I should be taking up and going ahead in this area. Yeah, yeah. and there is a lot. That's a big challenge, right? There is a lot of stuff in the space now. Um, and what's interesting too is, right, just even looking at how much is out there and, and kind of forcing people to choose, right? Um, so last week, I think is a great example of this. You had two major events going on at the same time that both address this space in some fashion, right? You had RSA, which is a massive security conference that so many of us are familiar with and have been a part of. Um, but then you also had the DevOps Enterprise Summit. And that being run by the, the DevOps leaders, so folks like Gene Kim and John Willis and Jez Humble and folks like that, where um, they realized very um, early on that security was such an important part of that space. And now seeing that that conference has its own track dedicated to security and things like that. So those worlds are definitely coming together. And, and sifting through all of that is becoming a real, uh, real interesting challenge. And so um, I spend a lot of time on Twitter, obviously, and in, in different places, reading articles and looking. And, and it's amazing to me how much of that information is out there. So getting started is, is really um, interesting, you know, in there. So I guess my, my first suggestion, if somebody is, is really just looking like, okay, what is this whole DevSecOps area? And what, what do I do? And how do I get in? Um, looking at some of those key thought leaders in the space, um, I would approach it from the development side first than I would the security side only because so much of the business necessity and so much of what's going on in that space is driven by the ability to get features out quickly and safely. And, you know, those are the things that, that keep the business going. And so there, um, there is a lot around how does security align to that better versus just the, the normal um, kind of, no, we can't do that, or this is unsafe or gating uh, and stuff like that. Um, I thought about this yesterday and, and I, would, I guess I would phrase it this way saying it's, it, today it's a little bit less about gating and it's more about being great, right? So less gates, more great um, in terms of how we're delivering software. Um, but certainly the thought leadership spaces, I think the conferences are a good way to get started. And particularly if you can do a free one, there's a lot of organizations now um, that are doing free one day virtual events where they bring thought leaders together. Um, SNCC did one last year. There's uh, all day DevOps that's coming up uh, in the fall. Um, there's uh, Equilibrium, which is happening in June. Uh, so there's a number of these different places where folks can sign up. In fact, I think even uh, today Swamp Up is happening uh, by JFrog, right? So there's, there's all these ones where people can join for free and it's a great way to get exposed to some of these things and see what people are talking about and then get information for it. Yeah, totally nailed the point. And when we talk about conferences, it's all about networking. And what yes. I have heard from my friends, from my seniors or the people who, who are around me that networking is one key area in security or in IT. Do you yeah. agree with that? Oh, absolutely. How much is, and, yeah. Yeah. No, and in fact, um, when you say that, I think about how you and I met. So we, you know, we, we met in Washington, D.C., and you were doing a keynote session there on diversity. Um, and I love that session, by the way, because it was so uh, you talked about diversity from every possible angle. 
and a bunch that that most people hadn't thought of, and there were things that certainly I hadn't thought of in there, and so um, that was that was amazing. And I, of course, I remember the stage being gigantic as well, and so I was in this massive room. Um, and the reason I tell that story is because you were very approachable afterwards. And so when we talk about networking and we talk about these conferences and getting people together, what I find more often than anything is that people want to engage. They're there, right? They're sharing their session, they're sharing that information. And so even in the virtual world, um, we're seeing this tendency now where people are recording their talks ahead of time and they're being delivered during the conference, but the speaker is live in the chat. And what that allows is a lot more engagement, right? They're not focusing on what they're saying, they're able to, to address, right? And, and so I would say, yeah, reach out to people, engage with people, talk to people, um, build that community uh, and, and be able to do that. And I found the, the InfoSec community in particular is very open, very transparent, very willing to uh, accept folks in and talk about these topics um, and very willing to answer questions. Um, in fact, there's a, if you're on Twitter regularly, there's things like Cyber Mentoring Monday, which is a hashtag that goes out. Um, there was a, for a while there was, um, I can't remember the exact hashtag, but it was about who has a big security win, right? And that would come out on Wednesdays. And so there's these ongoing topics that are driving some of that engagement as well. But but absolutely, um, don't be afraid to, to reach out. And and look, we're, we're uh, I have a friend of mine who likes to say we're all ignorant just on different subjects. So there's there, nobody knows everything and we all benefit from talking to each other and learning from each other. Yeah, I totally agree with you on that point. <laughs> uh, there's another thing that, that has been running around that especially a lot of beginners come back, uh, come to me and ask me that, how much is it important to be hands-on when mm. you are just starting with insecurity or maybe in IT, how much is important to know each and every aspect of it? And to add on to it, there are so many certifications. How much yeah. they are important. Oh my gosh. Yeah, and there's there's a lot of them. Um, there's a graphic I saw somewhere, you know, I'm trying to remember who, I think CompTIA had it, um, where they showed all of the different security certifications that are available today, and they tried to align them to different disciplines. So things like that can be a little bit helpful. And for folks, if they're very targeted on, hey, I want to do network administration, right, then there's a set for those. Um, then there's some of the broader, you know, security plus and CISSPs that, that go across a you know, broad spectrum of these things. Um, but what's interesting now in, in uh, you know, I have a, a university age daughter, so she's going to be a senior next year. What I've been telling her in this um, is that the two things I think are so important in the job market in general are, are we hit the first one, right? Build your network. But the second one is build skill. Um, and it's demonstrated skill in experience. Now, certifications help do that. They say, I learned something and they're credible. But, but I think getting that experience, you know, in there, even, even if you don't necessarily have the certification, do you have the demonstrated skill? Um, and so I would turn the question just a little bit in this way. And I think one of the things that we can do as, as security leaders, as vendors, as practitioners, um, I don't think we have enough safe spaces for people to fail. And what I mean by that is when we were in university and, and growing up in the, in the job market, um, and a lot of us, you know, my age, right, can, can think of major mistakes we made in a job where, uh, you know, the, the world would have ended or something like that. I can remember in my own case, um, being a configuration management specialist, trying to clean up disk space on a server one day and inadvertently deleted the entire code base. And thank God we had backup tapes and somebody caught it really quickly. But, you know, all of a sudden things that you don't want to disappear start disappearing, right? And it was because I, I made the mistake of doing a, you know, an RM-RF star on a mount and that mount <laughs> went out and, you know, and so you learn that way, right? Um, the problem with security is it's, it's a space where failures can be devastating data loss, right? Millions of dollars, um, people's lives, you know, th those kinds of things. And so there has to be a way for us because we learn by making mistakes and we learn by challenges so that we have to be able to get hands on, but in a safe place to learn, okay, what does it really look like to build a micro perimeter for zero trust architecture? 
Um, what does it look like to, you know, leverage input validation well for an API call, right? All of these different things. So I think that's something. And, I, and you know, whether it's a capture the flag event or a hackathon, um, or we're creating a dedicated network in our organizations, those places where we're doing tutorials and skill building and stuff, I think that'll help more than anything else rather than telling somebody, hey, go on a two or three year journey, get this certification and then come back to me, right? I, totally true point, um, Rob. On the same lines, you mentioned the CTFs, you mentioned um, a few other aspects which can help people grow. So not everyone wants to play, but right. there are some people who wants to play these certificate, uh, these CTFs and uh, they want to gain knowledge from there. The, so mm -hmm. how they can start off with the CTFs because capture the flood events are unique in themselves. I remember playing a lot of them, winning some of them, failing some of them, but it's, it's a great learning for me. But yeah. there are people who want to kickstart their journey with the CTFs, but they're shy or maybe they're nervous, maybe they're scared. Mm -hmm. So how actually they can kickstart their journey towards the CTFs or capture so the flags? Yeah, so what I what I would suggest there, and and again, you know, personality I think comes in a little bit here too. But um, for me, it was through meetups. So I've had a lot of success through um, the if you go to like meetup.com or something like that. And I mean, you can you can find meetups for anything out there, right? Everything from hiking and knitting to fishing and application security and DevSecOps and and stuff like that. So. I would look for local meetups uh, in my area, um, and and obviously, you know, through the pandemic, everything being done virtually, um, but looking for for areas where there's similar interest and similar topics, and you see the you'll see these capture the flag events through uh, local OWASP meetups, um, and you'll see them through other organizations, right? Sometimes in testing, we're seeing an inter interesting intersection for QA teams and security these days. Um, but with the capture the flag stuff in particular, right, those meetups, they'll often announce them and then they tend to do them in a team based fashion. So you'll have, um, it, it won't be you yourself just trying to go and, and find it individually. Normally you're part of a group of about four or five others and you kind of form a team. And so that can be a great way to kind of enter the space as well is to, to do it with a friend. And so you're, you're kind of figuring these things out together. There's some shared learning, there's, there's knowledge transfer. Um, that can be a great, great way to do that. Um, and I, I highly recommend those kinds of things because one thing leads to another out of those. Um, my, my, my favorite sort of meetup is uh, I years, a couple of years ago when my daughter was at school, um, I went and met with a group of user experience folks. Um, and they're, they're all doing form design and trying to think about layouts and the user experience for all the things that they're doing. And I went to talk to them about security. And their meetup just happened to be this sort of speed dating format where everybody had a couple of minutes to introduce. And so, you know, bell would go off and folks would introduce and say, hey, I'm in user experience and I do form design. And I'm like, great, I'm in cyber and I do application security. And they'd look at me and go like, what are you doing here? And I'm like, I'm really glad you asked, right? You know, and it was, it really was all about, do you care what happens when somebody hits the submit button? Right. And, and now with things like GDPR and, you know, CCPA, you have to, right. You have to think about what that application is actually doing. And so there's all those little intersects that happen. Um, well, that discussion led to somebody in that group saying, Hey, you should go talk to this person. Uh, and a few months later, you know, I had access to classrooms. I was talking to students. I had met the CISO for the university all because you put yourself out there to say, hey, let's try this, right? And so I think that's that's the message there for those meetups is just put yourself out there and you'll, you'll find you're probably much more talented than you realize. You have more skill than you're aware of and people value your input, you know? And so those, those are things I think make a big difference. Thank you so much, uh, Rob, for sharing all the yeah. wonderful insights. I am sure it will be really, really helpful for the people. Yeah, 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 and happy to help. Absolutely. <laughs> There's a lot we can do. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. For everyone who's watching, I'm going to share all the details of uh, his LinkedIn profile, Twitter profile. Please do reach out to Rob. He's one yeah. wonderful person in application security space. 
Yep. One of many, many, <laughs> you are wonderful yourself. Um, yeah. And if you're interested, I'm on Twitter. The handle is uh, at Rob observatory. So uh, observatory with an R at the front. Um, but yeah, always happy to talk. It'd be great. Thank you so much, Rob, for joining me today. It's a pleasure yeah. to have you. Thank, thank you. you so much. Yeah. Thank you for having me.